Dump, dump. <laughs> what movie's that from? Chica, chica. I don't know. Yeah, you do. What? You don't know what that's from? Chica, uh, chica. Do, dump, dump. Ferris Bueller. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great movie. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pursuit. Jeff Hutchin here with John Saborov, and uh, we are glad you've made a choice to choose our podcast today, to take a few moments out of your day to listen to things for which we are choosing to ponder, and we invite you along this journey as we are in the relentless pursuit of truth and transformation. And, uh, and that's, you know, this thing was born, if you're a brand new listener, brand new subscriber, which we've been watching and tracking here lately, uh, we're excited, man. I think mm -hmm. we have around 630 subscribers which on, I'm YouTube. Excited, on YouTube and uh, we just I was looking at some metrics this morning we were looking and we've had uh, you know 4,000 unique views over the last 28 days uh, 6,000 total views so the way I look at this man God has given us an online mega church we got a mega I'm church. really excited about we are honored mega should we take up an offering right now yeah so if you would just <laughs> pass the plate and uh, no. hey hit that uh, Boom, boom. Oh, we got to start the timer. Yeah, we got to start. Or we'll just go for like an hour. Exactly. We go for an hour. Be a and Joe these guys Rogan. Are, be a Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, three hours. Holy <laughs> smokes. Somehow that guy, three hours plus. Yeah. And you know, billion views or whatever. Yeah. We go twenty nine minutes and our viewership drops. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man, come on. Well, we're excited you've chosen uh, to spend a few minutes out of your day with us, and we hope that uh, your time spent here will be greatly rewarded as we, we dive into the word. But um, today's episode is being brought to you by our friends over at Trinity Team Real Estate. Eric Frisky and his team over there, if you're looking to make one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make in your life purchasing real estate, we've got the team for you. This is a group that is family-oriented, uh, family-owned, and faith-based, and they love the Lord, and they want to serve you. They want to put you at the center of the transaction. And so if that's, a, if that's something you're looking for and, in that, in that, uh, and you live in northern Colorado or even in Denver, for that, for that matter, this is the team that can uh, serve you well. You can find them at Trinity, Trinity Team Real Estate Co. Dot com. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. So reach out and tell Eric that you heard about it right here on The Pursuit. All right, man. You've got a topic today we want to Come dive on. into. I'm excited about this because I don't have no clue what you're about to say. Low, really Lowercase T for topic. I mean, this is just a, a thought that I came in with, and I just, I don't know. It's going to go somewhere. And that's usually the we we love that. There's a uh, one of the guys here in the in the co-working space where our studio is, dropped by to say hi, had coffee, you know, with you this morning. And what are you going to talk about? I don't know. He's like, really? You don't know? I'm like, no, we're going to find out here in just a moment Wanna, when we pray. And hey, how about this? Shout out to Terry Lydon, who's going to be watching. Terry Lydon will watch this episode. I guarantee you. He's not going to watch it. He'll listen to it. Listen to He's it. A, He'll be riding his bike. Yeah. He's a bike rider. He is. I would love to know all the different ways in which people oh, partake of our content. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah. On a treadmill. treadmill, yeah. I don't know yeah. why we just said that. Well, so. Jeff Porter is the first person I thought of. Yeah. He's on a treadmill probably right right now. He needs Listen. to be on a treadmill. Uh-oh. Dang. <laughs> well, see? see? Dang. Uh, it's a test. We're going to find out whether he listens to this episode or no, not. No, I... Because I'll get a text from him. Look, I just got a notification. Our <laughs> subscribership dropped by one. There you go. Jeff's out. Exactly. <laughs> okay. So here's the scenario, and uh, maybe just a peek into my brain, scary, but uh, on the way in today... And it's something I've been just pondering. I'm thinking about Peter in the post-Easter thing, right? Because in the, in the post-Easter story, our attention turns, and now Jesus is, is uh, resurrected, but he's, he's not yet gone, gone back to the Father. He spent some time here on earth, mm -hmm. and he taught the disciples, and he mm -hmm. spent time with him. And maybe we'll get there, but um, there's a really cool scene around the, the restoration or restoral of Peter that happens, I don't know how long after Easter it happens. My sense is maybe a week or so. Um, there's probably somebody out there that knows exactly what day that is post, you know, Easter Sunday or whatever. But um, it reminded me about Peter's failure and, and even about Jesus, number one, telling him he's going to fail. And number two, be, uh, seemingly being okay with it. Not that he's signing off on failure but he's made a provision for peter's failure and that's where i want to go today because as i'm driving in rolling my eyes in denver colorado as it seems like two out of every three vehicles in front of me is an out-of-state license plate mm -hmm. which means that what they're in the left lane going 35 miles an hour mm -hmm. taking pictures of the mountains and all oh, this yeah. stuff right and so uh, got off the highway 
And as I'm getting getting off the highway, the truck in front of me, one of those kind of big monster trucks, and it's got a full size spare in the bed of the truck. Okay. Like it is so big, doesn't fit underneath in the place it's supposed to go. We got to mount this baby, and plus it looks pretty good out yeah. there for a monster monster truck to have one of those. And I'm sitting there just with nothing else to do. Just you know, I've got some worship music on, and I'm I'm looking ahead of me, and this thought occurs to me. Well, let me ask you. What 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 is a spare tire? What's the usefulness of a spare tire? I mean, it's kind of obvious, but what? There's two scenarios I think when it when when it, it only becomes useful when you need it. Right. It, when what would tell you that you need that spare tire? Flat tire. Yeah. So you have a failure in your life to kind of bring it now into a man's That's life right. or a person's life. You've got a failure in your life that caused that tire to just blow out, mm -hmm. or it's just gotten exhausted. It's mm -hmm. just worn out. Mm -hmm. And the idea is that in some ways carrying around a tire like that as we do is an admission to the imperfection of the vehicle that we're driving okay. to say it's going to it's going, it's going to, to fail. fail it's going to wear out um, but in the other part of it is it's not just this admission to its own weakness but this idea that the breaking down of a vehicle as i know very well over the last few weeks as i'm waiting for my truck to finally get out of the shop um, is part of the experience of having a vehicle mm. so is a person's life mm. And so I want to draw us, and I'm just going to tee okay. up the scripture, and I want, to, I want you to, if you would, um, go to Luke 22, and I want you to read, if you would, uh, verses 31 and 32. 31 and 32 out of the NIV says this, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat. Who's speaking, by the way? Jesus. Okay, it's red. Okay. I know that because it's red. Yes, that's correct. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift you as wheat, but I have prayed for you, Simon. That your faith may not fail, and when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Say one more verse, if you would. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times that you know me. Yes. So there is, in, there's a lot packed into here, a lot of it, right? Um, what are some of the things that I mean, just as you read that that portion of scripture, what's a knee jerk, right? That just my knee jerk is why would Jesus tell him that? Mm. Why would God or why would Jesus go out of his way to tell Peter that he's going to fail him? Why? Do, wh what do you think? Was it by chance? Yeah. So why do you think? Why do you think Jesus took the time out to say that? Yeah, you, you know, I think he knows the heart of a man that says, you know, especially one that's following him, like Peter was following him, who is a, uh, you know, Peter was all in. I mean, Peter was the first to stick his shoe in his mouth and the first to, that Jesus said, you know what? Flesh and blood hadn't re revealed that to you. Actually, my Father in heaven did. You're, you're hearing him. And on this church, I'm gonna, I mean, <laughs> on this rock, I'm going to build my church, yeah. right? Right, some, some amazing stuff, some foot-in-the-mouth kind of stuff. Um, and I think that he knew the heart of man, but in particular of Peter, that says, I know he's going to fail me, and here's the point of it. I need to give him a spare tire. Mm. For when he does break down, he's I, I, he's going to remember this moment, and know that he's he can be restored. Mm. Um, and and I and I see that here because it says um, Satan's desire to have you sift you as wheat. So in other words, there's an attack that's that's coming against you. Okay, the opportunity for you to fail. I prayed for you that your faith should not fail. And we think about okay, what does that mean? Does that mean that he's going to avoid? The, the the pitfall he's going to avoid the you know nail in the in the road so to speak that's going to that he's going to run over and end up you know with a with a tire that's flapping and you know mm -hmm. a hundred yards up the road um, or does it mean I prayed for you that your faith will not fail meaning when you do fail that's your what, faith will bring you back I think that's what it is I, in my opinion I think it's I think it's Jesus saying when that tire does bust right because that's one thing Jesus knows about us because he he was man. Yeah. He knows the frailty of man. He knows he knows the weakness of man, and he points it out to Peter. You're you're weak. Matter of fact, you're so weak. I'm telling you right now, you're going to deny me not once, not twice, <laughs> but three times. Uh -huh. So he even told him in advance what was about to happen, and it still came forth. Why? Because Peter and his weakness. And so, uh, you know, it, what's fascinating to me too is, is that, um, you know, we we we're hard on Peter. Mm -hmm. Right, and we we, we have a tendency to look at this story and go, Jesus just told you you're gonna fail, and you still did it. Right, right, right. But what did Peter not have that you and I have? Holy Spirit. At right. that point, right? He didn't have Holy Spirit yet, 
And so, and that's part of what Jesus was speaking about, by the way, when, when he said to Peter, listen, you didn't figure this thing out by yourself that I'm the Messiah. It's the fact that my Father in Heaven revealed it to you. And that's what's so amazing. Yeah. And, and we could talk a oh, whole man. episode about what Jesus meant when he said, on this rock I will build my church. Because there's a lot that's... of theories, a lot of theologies, and matter of fact, a major religion was born out of that. But um, I, I, in my personal opinion, what, what Jesus was saying in that moment is it's that spirit, that revelation. I'm going to build my church on the revelation of my messiahship. I'm going to build right. my church on those that walk in that spirit, right? That that's the, that's the direction of the church. But um, but God, you know, through Jesus here in this moment, does something amazing. He does. He speaks to the frailty. He speaks to the weakness. Yeah. He speaks that it's no promise that you're not going to run over nail. Matter of fact, it's going to happen. Right. Right. How we choose to respond to that means everything. Yeah, totally. Um, a few things jump out. One, I want to make sure that we're clarif clarifying for our viewers. It's not that Peter didn't have the Holy Spirit. It, the Bible says that prior to Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit was with us, not in us. That's right. right? And, and Peter, or Jesus said on his way to the cross, he told everybody, he says, hey, I've got, I've got to go away, I've, but I've got a lot more to say to you. But I can't say it to you until I send the, the Holy Spirit because he will teach you all things. And he won't come until I leave. And he won't come until I leave. That's right? right. So I've got a lot more to say to you. I've said as much as I'm going to say to you on this planet. Um, and me personally, the rest of it's going to be taken over because we're going to have a conversation 24-7 in your heart via the Holy Spirit. And that's great news. And we've talked about on previous episodes, you know, it's the difference between visitation and inhabitation, right? Come on, prior to this, more. prior, prior, I mean, during this time where this context of this story is taking place, the Holy Spirit would come and visit, yes, visit people, yeah. right? He would, he would come and speak to a prophet. He would speak to people. He'd reveal things to people. I would even suggest that in that moment where Peter says, yes, you are the Messiah, that was a visitation I by agree. the Holy Spirit that revealed that to him so totally. he could actually say that with conviction. Um, so visitation before the Holy Spirit came. Now Holy Spirit is on the scene. He inhabits us. He's in the heart of the believer. Yeah. He doesn't leave. And, and, and that's, by the way, that's something, I don't know what makes me think of this, but oftentimes when I pray, especially with when I'm a group of people and, and we're about to dive into the word, and oftentimes people will say, Holy Spirit, come uh. and teach us and lead us. And, and I've started to change, and I used to say that. I used to, I'm now I'm changing the way that I pray, and it's not Holy Spirit, come. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit's already here. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, come alive within us, right? Help Holy Spirit remove my flesh, remove the barriers, mm -hmm. remove my fleshly mind from being able to receive and understand what is specifically written here, which is the Word of God that's live and active, sharper than a double-edged sword to separate joint from marrow. That's what I'm praying for is Holy totally. Spirit to remove me from the equation, right? That's which so gets important. In the way. So important. And that's why so many people, John, and you know this, we talk to people all the time. They go, man, I just can't read the Word of God. I don't understand the Word of God. These are Holy Spirit-filled believers yeah. that are saying, yeah, I just, I don't know that we're meant to understand that. Mm. That's a lie from the pit that of hell. Lie. And so, And you're right. What, here's where they are right. In our flesh, and in our fleshly minds, you're right. Mm -hmm. We're not going to understand this, and it makes no sense to mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. And so part of the growth of a believer is how can I begin to move out? How can I begin to move my flesh aside yeah. and, and set that aside and go, man, I'm going to open up my heart through power of Holy Spirit. Now, Holy Spirit, teach me and show me and lead me and allow revelation to come forth from these pages. And yeah. as we can get out of that way, man, this thing, this, this Bible, this book comes alive, man. Yeah. Well, I want you to say something real quick about Romans chapter 12, because there's, there's two, scripture, uh, two scriptures that people often point to. And I even thought about what, what a person that's pushing back on what you just said might yeah. say. And they would go immediately to, and you might be able to predict it, um, that, that says, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways, Right. Um, and they'll point to that scripture to say that we don't have um, it, that, that we don't we don't have the ability to think like he thinks. But then Romans chapter 12 says that we have the mind of Christ. Right. And so unlock the whole. So we've got these two seemingly things, contradictory um, statements about our ability to perceive the and, and understand the ways of God. Mm -hmm. So what's the difference between this Old Testament way of thinking and this Romans 12? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the difference between flesh and spirit, right? So we, we worship God in spirit. We, mm. we converse with God in spirit. And I think that's hard for us in the natural. 
to, to understand what that means and how that actually, how we live that out, right? We, we battle that every day. I battle it every day in that saying, okay, in my flesh, this is the way I perceive relationship, okay? The way I perceive relationship in the flesh is just like you and I are experiencing right now. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a person to person, face to face. I can sure. see your emotions. I can see reactions. I can hear your words. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time with you. And then it gets to a point to where um, within the first couple of minutes of being with each other, you know where I'm at. You go, oh, man, there's something wrong with Hutch. Or, no, things are good. This is the Hutch I know, right? And so that's how we perceive relationship in the flesh. And we try to take that same perception and we take it in the spirit, in the relationship with God. And that's why a lot of people go, I don't hear God's voice. Mm. I can't understand his word. Why? Because we're trying to take this fleshly approach to relationship into what is designed to be a spiritual engagement mm. and we don't we never take the time to understand what it means to engage our spirit in relationship mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so that's what we're called to and that's why he says you've been given the mind of christ what does that mean as we not not from a fleshly standpoint from a spiritual standpoint now holy spirit's within us we now have the ability it's there the the, the possibilities to to see things as god sees them to see things as the son saw them to see things as the Holy Spirit, we now have been given the ability. Now the challenge is how do we tap into the Spirit mm -hmm. to be able to receive the things that only the Spirit can see? That's that, good. Therein, therein lies the, the challenge. The, the That's the growth, tension, yeah. right? That's the growing as a follower of Christ. Yeah, I, I, I would call it, and I've been, I've been terming it lately, um, the illusion of separation. We walk around in this condemnation. We walk around... Um, without this encouragement, knowing that we've just denied him after the rooster crowed three times, knowing that we knew ahead of time that it was going to happen, just like Jesus warned, warned Peter, and still that we got the flat tire, right? And somehow we feel like we're now separated. Okay, gosh, I'm so glad you brought that up. We've got, we've got 12 and a half minutes. I know, and we this. haven't gotten to the place I want to get to yet, but go ahead. Well, th this is what I'm thinking, because you're right. You, you brought up separation, and I've been, I've been pondering on this. And the reason why I've been pondering on it, I got this question about a week ago. Somebody asked me this question, and I'll tell you what the question is in a moment. And it really made me stop and think. I'm like, huh, you know, I've never processed through that question. I have a, I have a quick answer to it, mm. but I've really never processed it. And it was the moment on the cross mm -hmm. when Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? What does it mean? Let me just ask you this question. What do you think it means to be forsaken? It's not forgotten, not uh, maybe, um, oh gosh, what's the right word to... I, let me just share it with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so really, if, if you define that in the Greek, what it literally means is to be abandoned. Okay, abandoned. To yeah. be abandoned. Okay. To be despised. Ah. So what Jesus is saying in that moment, my God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Right. That's, that's a precarious question, right? Matter of fact, a lot of um, atheists take go to that scripture right there and say, if your God is so good and Jesus was who he, who he said he was, why is he saying to his father in that moment, why have you abandoned me? Mm -hmm. Because, right, did Jesus know that he was going to the cross? Yes. He knew he was going to the cross. Yes. Did Jesus know that he was going to be risen again? Yes. He knew, that he, was going to be, he knew that he was going to the right hand of the Father. So what is going on? There's a sense of separation that takes place. Here's the lie that the enemy wants to tell you. Mm -hmm. When you sin, God separates himself from you. And the fact of the matter is that is not true. God Correct. is in all things. He's with us in all times. He goes to the depths of the earth to pull his children out of sin. He's with us in our deepest, darkest, most um, disobedient times. Yes. But what Jesus experienced for the first time in his life is what you and I experience when we sin. And that is a sense okay. of separation. We sense that God is pulling away from us. Why? Because we think of relationship in the fleshly sense. Mm -hmm. We think of mm -hmm. when I fail you, mm -hmm. when I do something that upsets you, mm. what, what happens naturally in a natural fleshly relationship? Mm -hmm. We separate. Sure. Right? Sure. So we take that same fleshly mindset of relationship and we apply it to God and we think, well, God must have pulled himself away from us. But what actually Jesus experiences, you've got to think about this. All Jesus knew was an eternal fellowship with his father. Mm-hmm. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit been in existence forever. Mm -hmm. That's hard for us to imagine. Yep. 
And in this moment, he's experiencing in a human way what you and I experience when we sin. Because the sin of the world was placed on Jesus on the cross. He's feeling in his human flesh, he's feeling a sense of separation. Yeah. And he gives voice, get this, he gives voice to what you and I experience every single day. Yeah. I, that's good. I, I'll give you a, a pivot a little bit on that. Um, I could see where, because what I hear you saying in that is the the sense that he experienced was one not unlike you or, you or I naturally experience. But for him, who was walking in fellowship with the Father at all times, kind of reminds me of so my, my second oldest. I never had to discipline outside of just looking at her and saying, mm-hmm. You've disappointed me. <gasps> you know, she right, and and that was worse than any any spanking any any spanking, any any sort of other other punishment. And and in some ways, Jesus is like that with the Father that says even a turn away like this from of the Father's face would feel so dramatically different than what He experiences every day. It's like amplified this this a sense of separation. But I also want to point this out. He took upon him the sin of the world. Mm-hmm. He was the sacrifice that, and, and was the curse hanging on he, the tree. That's another point, too. So he became the curse. For you us. and me. That's right. He so became we the curse. Don't, yeah, exactly. So you and I, when we sin, do not, we are not cursed. We are not separated. Because Jesus paid for my past, present, and future sins, plural, by taking care of sin, the principle, singular, on the cross, once and for all so even that forsakenness is his is jesus saying i've become the sacrifice for you so that uh, the perfect sacrifice that'll pay for your sins and i also paid for the abandonment yeah yeah i paid for so you and will he ne- felt it and he and felt it and, that, and that's what he's communicating out but like i said that's why i said it's so powerful he gives voice to what you and i experience when we sin Totally. We sense that separation. It's not there. It's not real. It's an illusion. God's right there. Yep. And Satan wants you to think that it's real. Yep. But we, in our flesh, we experience that. And that's, that's why we talk about oftentimes, we, we've talked about it on this show, about the, the difference between conviction yeah. and condemnation, right? Satan wants to push us further and further away uh-huh. Uh-huh. In, the, in the relationship with God where conviction, conviction draws us closer to can, can you imagine being married uh, and, and, and having this relationship of, Okay, I failed you, and we're never, and I'm leaving here, and I'm out of here, or you failed me, and that's it, it's over. And the next day, oh, we're going to make up, and everything is fine. Oh, okay, and we go through a weekend. No, it's over, it's over. You know, and, you, and you go through toxic. this. Uh, it's toxic. Yeah, yeah. Toxic is what you call that. Why on earth would we, why do we think that that's toxic, but that's how we naturally think of our relationship with God? Because we, like God's just yeah. saying, you know, you've done too much now. Uh, come back in a week, and I'll, I'll let you know if I've forgiven you or not. It's back to what we said earlier, and that is because we take a fleshly approach to relationship totally. when we're called to bring a spiritual approach, our spirit uh, approach to relationship. It's it's the difference between night and day. Totally. But that's also that same difference is the difference that allows us to read Scripture and to, and to receive revelation, right, and, and to understand his word. And that's one of the great benefits of the Holy Spirit is he's there as a, yeah. not just an advocate but also a teacher, a counselor to take us through these things so if we could finish out that last um that last bit of luke chapter 22 verse 31 and 32 let's just look at verse 32 so he's desired to have you as if he is weak i prayed for you you're you're still going to fail but i'm praying that your faith is going to bring you is, is going to do what it's supposed to do mm-hmm. and maintain relationship mm-hmm. through your failure right and when you've returned to me so your faith is going to it, in other words, it, it's like he's pronouncing to say, hey, we're going across the Sea of Galilee, and we're going to do some work over there or whatever, so get in the boat, right? And then the storm comes. Does the storm change the, the fact that he told you we're going to go to Galilee? No. We're still going to Galilee. Just to change or, an or expectation. To cross Galilee. Um, yeah. And, and so he's telling him, you're going to fail, and your faith will return you to me. It will restore you to me. And when it does, don't keep it to yourself. Tell other people about it. Strengthen mm. your brethren. So mm. when you fail, it's good for other people mm. too. The power of the testimony. Oh my gosh, my goodness, we're supposed to be. Paul says in Second Corinthians, I think it's three. He says that we are living epistles. What's an epistle? A letter, a living letter, known and read of men. In other words, there should be a gospel according to Hutch. Just like the, the four Gospels, there is a Gospel according to Hutch, and it's written all over your life. Mm-hmm. There's your successes, there's your failures, there's, there's the places where um, God's you know, forgiven, 
uh, forgiven you, brought you, restore relationship, all, all of these things. And it should be illustrating and an invitation to those around you to say, I want to follow that. Jesus. You know, you know where, where my thought goes immediately. And as soon as you said it, I'm like, it just crushes my, mm. crushes my heart because, you know, um, we, as you just said, and I'm going to say it a different way. Okay. We, we are called to live a life of transparency. We're called to live our life in transparency. We're called to, to not just talk about our victories, but also to share our struggles and share our, our, our thing where we failed. Right. Yeah. And, it's the story of the gospel. Everything you're just talking about, right? It's the story. It's the epistle on my heart that's written each and every day. Yeah. However, what scares me today is is I look at um, our culture as it relates to social media. Mm. And I was just in an event last night, and they were talking about this as a Groundwire event. Am- amazing ministry, by the way. I encourage you to look it up. Groundwire, JesusCares.com. Amazing thing that they're doing, reaching millennials for Christ. However, what they're talking about on there is... When, when you post on social media, do you ever post your struggles? Hmm. No. Everybody's going to take the highlights of their life, and that's what they put out there. right? And, and it's so dangerous because not, not only is it false, because you're really not being transparent. We, you know, we say, oh, social media, you're able to be transparent with the world. BS. Mm-hmm. You, you're only being transparent with the things you choose to be transparent totally. with. Totally. Right? Right. And it only promotes that mindset, whereas, man, if I show my weakness – then people are going to reject me. I'm not going to get as many followers, whatever it is. And so we're promoting a mindset that is, that is dangerous and destructive. And that's, that's where my mind went. It just makes me really sad. Can you imagine um, giving Peter a, a, a Twitter account in these moments with that same perspective? I don't get the sense, by the way, that Peter would fall into that category. I think he'd be telling everybody, yep, failed again. Yeah. <laughs> Happened again. Doggone it. You know, whatever. But this whole thing about Jesus saying, you're gonna you're gonna fa- uh, fail me. You're gonna deny me. Then he denies, and I'm looking down here. It's like, what does he do after he denies and he and he runs away? What does he go do? Returns. He to goes back to what he was doing fishing, before fishing. Yep. So, in the in in that using that metaphor of what you're talking about right now as an example, and what might have happened in Peter's life if he fell into the pattern of the way that we handle, especially in America, around social media. Forget the whole thing about yeah, I denied Jesus and all that. I caught 18 fish today. Look at this. And, yeah. and right. Um, there'd be this total uh, lack of awareness about the significance of something that could be a, a, a or is a failure and could be a help and encouragement to somebody else. And and this focus on, to your point, the image I'm projecting. Yeah. Right. What if we never knew this about Peter? My goodness. I think about this man all the time yeah. that says, you know, when I, when I, you know, am prone to fall into old patterns of thinking or say, believe old, uh, you know, old things about myself, I think about him. And then I remember, and I know, and one of my favorite scriptures in the entire Bible is when Jesus washed Peter's feet or mm. started to, when he goes, yeah. Jesus, no, 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 you're not washing my feet. Yeah. Insert John's name here. Jesus, it, P, Jesus, you are not going to wash my feet. John, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. You're not even going to heaven. Okay, Jesus, then start with my head mm-hmm. and work your way all the way down because I want all of it, mm-hmm. right? I want all of it. And so, yeah, so I think about him. Thank God for Peter. We have the the story of his imperfection. It's an encouragement. And, and just by virtue of reading Luke chapter 22, it is accomplishing the thing that he set out for it to accomplish, that we have been strengthened So today. you have 45 seconds. 45. What's our takeaway? For the listener out there on that treadmill that says, what's my takeaway today? Don't be ashamed. Summarize don't be ashamed of carrying around that spare tire. And I don't mean like a, you have a spare tire, you need to go get You're on the treadmill, gym. so they're getting rid of the That's spare right. tire. There you go. That's step one. Don't be ashamed. I, if, if, and what is a spare tire in our life? It's a provision for when we fail. It's a provision for when we get exhausted. Is it an, is it an excuse to fail? It's not. Because he says, what? Be perfect. <laughs> but when you're not, I'm here. I'm here for you. And, and not just to restore, but God working all things together for good, Romans 8, 28. And then the rest of Romans 8 that says, and by the way, the point of it is, even when you sin, I'm with you. Neither death nor life, principalities, powers, nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ. All of that is, and that's really the point of Romans 8. We talked about that in another show. 
Um, but but Hutch, that's what I would say to the viewers out there and listeners out there to say, don't be ashamed carrying around in your big, you know, monster truck, this mounted uh, sp full size spare tire, because you're going to fail. You're going to get exhausted. And that's the function of it is to get you back on the road to rely on him. Hey, amen. Thank you for joining us. I hope you've been encouraged today. Johnny, thank you for that word. And uh, we will uh, catch up with you guys next time. We'll see you next time right here on The Pursuit.